Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Shandi, for the introduction. So my name is Tagi. Uh, before jumping into the introduction, I want to just say, who is this uh, presentation for? So many uh, new managers, people who are interested in being managers or leaders, or anyone who is interested in knowing what is this about. So OK, let's go ahead. So as Shandi introduced, uh, I serve as engineering manager as, at Monster Lab, uh, Japan branch in Tokyo. So in terms of education, uh, I have a Bachelor of Science, Master of Engineering, uh, but that's it. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, who are managers, what they do, uh, the flow of it, how you become one of them, tips and tricks, uh, how to make it work, and how it looks like on, on calendar, uh, as simple as that. Also, there is a game uh, I would like to play. So it's kind of a questions game in order to make it interactive, right? So there's no right or wrong answer. Just feel free to, to write it in the chat. So firstly, uh, do you care more about people or technology? So this is kind of binary, but just uh, give it a try, right? Uh, OK. To the main point, uh, what do managers even do? And, and, uh, and who are managers? So this is one of the formal definitions, like engineering uh, many years normally plan, coordinate, uh, strategize uh, technical and engineering activities uh, of an organization, right? So, and this is actually means many years can have uh, different roles and this is depends highly on, on where you work, right? So let's say that there is no clear definition, but the main idea is, uh, when we say this person is a leader or uh, this person is a manager, uh, it comes with uh, certain responsibilities. And even in, in tech industry, we say a tech lead, right? Uh, and they say like by having the lead uh, word in front of, of your job title, it makes it kind of kind of cool. But at the end, tech lead as, as input, if you want to have it as an equation, Take lead in a proto manager out or proto architect. So we can think of them as uh, two ways. When you have a tech lead, they can be either managers or they can be either uh, architects or super, super engineers. But uh, putting the formal definitions aside, uh, what, is, what is the cool part about this actually? So when you are in management, management involves individualizing every employee to maximize their potential. Uh, to best utilize their unique skills. Uh, also, many years have the ability to improve employee satisfaction, right? And uh, development by getting to know them personally, promoting great success and productivity. Uh, good many years also provide employees with the support and resources, not only to perform well, but also to exceed uh, expectations. So let's say it's all about help, support, uh, motivating, utilizing, uh, skills, right? Uh, so how do you become there? How do you become a manager? How do you end up there? So the flow is normally uh, like this. Uh, hey, this person is very good at what they are doing. Let's make him or her a manager. Uh, and it's kind of step we assume, right? If, if we are doing well uh, and we are serving as super doer, uh, which is in our case, super uh, software engineering, uh, then we expect uh, ourselves and, and the people that we want to assign as managers to continue doing that plus uh, new managerial responsibilities. Even for you, if you wanna if you wanna go there or if you are interested, uh, and and if you are good at your job, probably you have inequality, some trades uh, that helps you through, and that might be good enough reason uh, to promote you. So normally there are two cases: in the very good individual contributor or someone. You know that he can be a manager, he's already doing leadership, but they don't want to take the, the role in official way, right? So uh, those kind of people are the best, actually, uh, to, to, to be in, a, in this position. So let's look on how it looked like uh, on the ladder. So this differs from a company to, to company. 
but normally have software engineer, uh, two, three, and then uh, senior software engineer, right? But what happened after that? What, what is next? Uh, and this goes back to, to this topic, like, can everyone become a manager? Can everyone become super doer? Uh, but as a result, normally good contributor doesn't equal a good manager. Not, not all the time. Differently, they can be. Uh, so as individual contributor, uh, we can continue being a staff, a software engineer, super software engineer, like Angle and, and so on. On the other hand, from a senior software engineer, if you are interested in, in managerial stuff, then you can end up being an engineering manager. Right. So to the left there, this path is for uh, software engineers, individual contributors, let's call it. And to the right is the many year path. And both of them has different levels also. So from uh, engineering manager, you can be a senior engineer manager. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, as engineer, if you want to continue as individual contributor, you can uh, continue going up the principal engineer or the other names, right? Uh, so <clears throat> this is how it looked like in general. Uh, and this, I think, the, the big picture. So keep in mind where, where you want to end up. Before and after. So let's say that you already made the decision that you like management, you like supporting people, helping your team. So how, uh, how you, do you do that? And there is just a small difference between before and, and after become engineering manager in general. So when you are an individual contributor, you are solely responsible for your own work. Uh, when you become a manager, there is this paradigm shift and uh, you now become responsible for work through and with others. Uh, you think at the beginning, you think you have good communication skills and uh, related skills also. But then you figure it out, you figure out actually, many men require a different set of skills, right? So what I'm trying to say here is, in order to be successful in managerial uh, tasks or at the managerial level, uh, or continue to be promoted, we have to invest in personal development. We as engineers, normally we focus so much on technical skills, but that's not enough if you wanna go to the managerial task. Right, so personal development, we need to figure out how to make the transition. We need to do it well. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna raise to the level of uh, incompetence. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a bit scary, but there is uh, something called Peter uh, uh, Principle or Law. This is by Lawrence uh, J. Peter. And it says that employees rise to the level of their incompetence. So in order not to end up there, Let's focus on personal development and soft skills. Cool. So this is mainly the difference. Uh, another question, just to refresh, an executive asks for a feature to land by a set uh, deadline, right? So what are your thoughts? Someone out of nowhere just asks for a feature. They already defined the deadline. Uh, what do you think of that? There is no right, again, there is no right or wrong answer. Just go ahead with it. Uh, okay. So just quickly, points to make this work. Uh, we, we saw the flow. Now you are interested in such role. So how you to make it work? So those are points I, I got from Matt, right? So firstly, let's call it the process, the process of the group or group processing. So normally the, the way group interact and the way group stick to a process is totally different from what you used to do before or what you used to be when you're an individual contributor. It means uh, you need to give clear thoughts to the dynamics of the group and where the team needs to go collectively. So let's call it a group process, right? The second P is peers. Uh, when you're at a manager level, you integrate. You are integrating and relying on your peers more than you did before. Uh, before you could just go do your work and shine. That was the way to, to go to the next level. But now you are relying on your peers, actually. For example, you might need an input from another manager in order to have your team do the job, do the job effectively. 
uh, you've got to build an effective alliance uh, within your, with your peers. Uh, the third P is people. So when you're in a leadership position or managerial position, actually you are in the business of people more than more than technology, right? And you got to get good at <clears throat> communicating effectively with the people you manage, uh, with your peers, and upward the line in order to give and get information, right? And to give, uh, more importantly, to give information up the chain of command that's required. Uh, the fourth P is paperwork. Uh, and this, what you mean by paperwork is the process. Normally, it's, there is a lot of reporting, a lot of paperwork, tracking things, rather than just uh, doing your own work. You are responsible for the paperwork associated with project management. And that can be overwhelming sometimes. So, yeah, figure out some organization skills, and that, I think, uh, can help. The fifth P, and I think this is the most important, is uh, politics. And what uh, I mean by that is uh, the ability to gently, persuasively, and with some skills, give and receive feedback. Because you help, you're also helping people, right? You help people to improve and to correct mistakes, letting uh, them know that something inappropriate has taken place. Uh, so here, learn how to give positive feedback and to motivate. Uh, and this is, I think, the most challenging, challenging part. Okay. So at the end, what what is what what is this all about? So at the beginning, when we all start, like we focus on technical aspects, right? No bugs. I'm quick. I did this amount of. Uh, Jira tickets, I did this amount of uh, features, clean code, stuff like that. And, and it's mainly about me, me kind of thing. But the reality is like, uh, what, is, what is the impact that you're having? Uh, the helping that you are doing, right? To your team, to the organization, the influence. So in general, we can say it's all about teamwork. A team as your team, as the organization also. So. How it look like in general, like daily basis. So uh, this is Monday and Friday, just randomly uh, picked days, and those are fake data. But uh, you have projects, you have urgent meetings, you have your own project that you are doing, you have follow up with your with your uh, team mates and stuff like that. Interviews. Uh, sometimes it's like this. I don't know if I'm 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 selling this job in a good way, but it might get so busy, like 90, uh, 90 is too much, 80%, 70% of the time, you're just talking, uh, getting information and giving information, right? Uh, but sometimes it's just like that. You have a certain project, uh, you are doing uh, this amount of, of work, I mean, in terms of reporting and attending meetings. So yeah, there, there is a good balance actually. Okay, so another question. Uh, project managers, just talk to two of your engineers, ask them to immediately start working on, on a new feature. Uh, what are your thoughts? What, how, or can, how, how do you react to this? So simply, again, there's no right or wrong answer. Just go ahead with it. Okay, Jan. Jan is a super, a uh, good engineering manager. So Jan is keen to develop, motivate, and empower people. Also Jan and other uh, good managers tend to interact with all levels uh, within an organization, right? Jan also helps employees identify opportunities for advancement and serving as sounding board, providing professional advice and insight. Uh, Jan and other effective managers help people stay motivated to do their best work. They make people, they manage, feel valued, supported, empowered. Uh, Jan feels successful when the team and the employees around feel or be successful. So it's not only about Jan, it's about the team mainly. Uh, Jan and other managers show genuine interest in employees' career development, acknowledge improvement, 
and not just deliverables, right? That's, that's something we focus, but not only the, uh, deliverables. We need to focus on improvement. Jan and other managers take time to discuss their direct reports, long-term career aspiration, and help them actually understand the potential and their career path. This might be within and outside uh, the organization. So in other words, let's be like Jan, if possible. So uh, I think that's it uh, for, for the managerial side. Uh, lastly, the game uh, we did, I mean, the questions we asked, why we have this question. So if you ever watch the movie uh, Blade Runner, uh, you remember this test. So it's kind of sci-fi uh, movie and you have androids among humans that looks like humans, but they're not humans. They're replicants, androids, right? And there is a set of questions you ask to define or to know if these uh, androids are humans or they are not humans. So simply fake humans versus, versus real humans. So uh, the same thing with the questions uh, I ask is, when you are interested in technology of, or people, depends on your answer, you will figure out if you are good to be an architect or you are good uh, to end up being, being a manager. But that's also relative. So yeah, more tips, find mentor, Stack Overflow is in there for you, build relationships, and yeah, keep asking. Uh, definitely, you are not there yet. Even me, uh, I'm at the beginning of this. So those are some resources. And I think this is the best book for everyone to start with. Uh, some bots and articles. So please check it. This helps a lot. Thank you so much. And yeah, if you have any questions. Amazing. Thanks a lot, Taggy. Uh, I can totally relate to this top topic because I've had a similar journey of moving from being an engineer to becoming a manager. So this was very insightful. Thanks a lot. Um, if I was to ask you a question, and we'll try and keep it brief because of the timing, but if you would, if you would kind of give us an insight of what you found as the most difficult part of being a manager. Okay, so at the beginning, the most difficult part is, let's say, time management uh, with assigned projects, tasks. So in co consulting industry, you, you have also assignments for your team, not only for you. So at the beginning, you're only responsible of your own tasks, right? But when you become a manager, it's like, okay, I have to manage other people's time also, not only mine. So that's, that's kind of difficult. The other thing is issues re resolving. So you might have some small conflict between a project manager and an engineer, and you have to get in the middle. So yeah, that's, I think, one of the difficult parts also. Yeah. For me, I found the context switching the most difficult, but all, all said is fair. Uh, amazing. Thanks a lot, Taggy, for your time.